be edifying and be able to build us up, Father God, and strengthen us on this Christian journey. Father God, we thank you for the man servant who's going to come before us. Father God, just continue to bless him, to be with him, and to be with his, his spouse as well. And Father, we just ask you to continue to bless him with the blessing you see that he stands in need of. Father God, not only for, for him, Father God, but for all those of the body of Christ, Father God, we just ask that we just continue to help us to be strong and to, to be on that narrow path. And Father God, we know that the way is narrow, and Father, we know that we must walk according to your will, and we must trust and obey. Amen. Father God, we have sinned against you. Father, we ask you just blot it out of your remembrance, Father God, and remember our sin no more. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that we pray and ask it all, let us all together say, Amen. 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 Tonight, some of y'all have seen it already. It takes about uh, it takes about 10, 10 minutes. Have you ever felt frustrated over religion in today's world? Does it seem too complicated in a time not very close to the heart of God? Well, I happen to agree. And that's why I'm thankful that you decided to spend some time with this video. We put it together because we think that today's religious world can be so confusing and discouraging and, well, at times, finding one's way home to God can seem like an impossible mission. That's why we're excited to have found a plan, a very simple plan for religion the way God intended. A heartfelt religion that praises God for His amazing grace, shows reverence for His Word, and draws us close to God where He wants us to be. Now, you may or may not be acquainted with the Church of Christ. Either way, we want it to be an open book for you to examine. Who knows? It might just be what your heart is searching for, because we believe that following God's own plan leads to a church that is both distinctive and welcoming. So if that sounds of interest to you, spend a little time with this message. It just might be the most important time you will ever spend. Without a doubt, the most profound and enduring book in history, proven correct again and again, for it is the only book whose ultimate author is God. The Bible story tells of a God who created mankind in his own image, who loves every one of us more than we can even imagine, and wants us to live for him in this life, and then live with him forever when this life is over. The Bible is God's divine revelation to us, with his loving provisions and commandments, letting us know clearly how much he has done for us and what he wants and expects from us. It is a story of truly amazing grace. God not only paying the price himself for our guilt, but offering us a new and eternal life that no one could ever deserve. Many people think God's grace began at the cross of Jesus, and that's where we see it so clearly. But that gift to mankind wasn't just an afterthought, it was planned even before God carried out the creation. So that's where our story begins. And of course, that's where the Bible begins. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Even today, we need only look at the majesty and perfection of the creation to realize its careful design. And God created man and woman, very complex and intelligent creatures, to be his beloved children. Their paradise on earth didn't last very long, though, because God also gave us our own free will to obey Him or to choose not to obey. Adam and Eve soon became curious what would happen if they chose their own way instead of following God's instructions. They're not alone, of course. We've all done exactly the same thing. But God wants to forgive, and from the earliest days of man's history, He made a way for man to come into His favor once again. Even when God destroyed a wicked population with the flood, he made a way for those who followed him to be saved. Noah followed God's instructions very carefully, and he and his family were saved in the ark. Later, God spoke to Abraham and offered a promise for mankind. I will make you a great nation, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Even though the details were not revealed to Abraham at the time, God was promising what he would plan to do for us all by sending the Messiah many hundreds of years later. 
He reveals the eternal nature of that plan to us in the New Testament when we read, According to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. As the history of Israel unfolded, God renewed his covenant and his promises many times over. He showed his people that he was a loving and forgiving God, and yet one who expected to be obeyed and expected to have the allegiance of his people from the heart. He brought his people to the promised land, gave them new commandments, and always reminded them that he would bring salvation. The message of the Old Testament is that a Messiah is coming. The New Testament opens with the glory of his arrival, the event that would change the world forever, as God lowered himself to become just like his creation. The very first verse of Matthew reminds us that the ancient promise to Abraham was now being fulfilled. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. John tells of his eternal nature and his taking on the form of a man in this very beautiful language. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. To all who were trusting in God and waiting for the promised Messiah, it was unmistakable, even from his birth, that Jesus was the promise fulfilled. When Mary and Joseph brought the infant Jesus to the temple, the prophet Simeon knew that this child was the Christ and the hope of the world. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. He was the glory of his people, as he still is, and his teaching was that all people, both Jew and Gentile, could now become the adopted children of God. He spoke of worship that came from devotion of the heart, not just the keeping of rituals and laws. He demanded that we would become his followers, no matter what it may cost us on this earth. And he promised that eternal life would be given to all who will accept him in faith. He proved that he really was God by the miracles that he did in front of thousands of witnesses. He became flesh and lived among us for one reason, and he made that reason clear. The Son of Man has come to seek and to say that which was lost. Of course, not everyone would believe even when God appeared in the flesh. Many in the world hated him so much that mankind carried out a sentence of execution on the Creator. And as he willingly submitted to torture and death, he completed the perfect sacrifice for sin once and for all. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of men, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. But what do his death and resurrection mean to us? Many people today would tell us that Jesus was a good man, and perhaps a prophet, but that one path to God is just as good as another. Actually, the answer to that is, respectfully, not so. Jesus was either the Lord whom he claimed to be, or a blaspheming liar. He left no room for anything in between, for he was not bashful in the least about proclaiming who he was, and insisting that we must be his followers if we want to obtain God's eternal promises. In John 14, Immediately after describing the promise of heaven, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The apostles had the same message when they said of Christ, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The same is true today. He is still the only Savior, and without the life that he alone can give, we are all still lost in our sins. 
the book of Romans confirms the truth that we all know about ourselves, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In fact, the Bible tells us that anyone who would claim otherwise is very badly mistaken. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. When we come to the realization that we have repeatedly sinned against the God who loved us so much, we are not alone. On the very day that God's church was established on earth, Peter stood in Jerusalem and spoke to the crowd that had killed Jesus just a few weeks earlier. He ended his sermon with these words, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. What a terrible realization to know that you have just crucified the very one who came to save you, God himself. The next verse says they were cut to the heart, and in desperation they asked the apostles if there was anything they could possibly do. They needed forgiveness. They needed hope of escaping the punishment that they surely deserved. Can you imagine the despair that must have overtaken the crowd in Jerusalem on this day? Just days before, as an angry mob, they were eager to call for the death of Jesus, accusing him of blaspheming God. But because of his miraculous resurrection from the dead, any possible doubt was removed that he was as he claimed to be. And for the first time, they realized he was God. And he had come to provide them the hope of being reconciled to God. When I read their question, men and brethren, what shall we do? I can't help but wonder if some of them might have been afraid that the answer would be, there's nothing you can do. It's too late. He was your only hope and you murdered him. But thank God that wasn't the answer they were getting. Rather, Peter and the apostles shared with the crowd the most amazing message of grace ever heard. Despite what they had done to Jesus, God was still willing to forgive them. Even as Jesus had prayed from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And God was willing to do that because the tortured and crucified Son of God had become the perfect sacrifice for the sins of all. So an answer of grace was given to their question, what shall we do? And that because there was a plan for their redemption and for ours. Now it's easy to imagine as we read the Bible that these individuals would have been more than ready to follow any plan that God offered. And that they did. It is in fact the same plan that God offers us. And you and I desperately need it just as much as if we were part of that Jerusalem crowd. It's an amazingly simple plan. Would you like to know more? The rest of this video is just a few minutes long. But what you're about to hear could make all the difference in your life. The question is a simple one. What can we do to be saved? The answer given in the Bible is also very simple. Unfortunately, man has often made a complicated mess of it instead either adding untold layers of additional requirements which are not in the Bible, or by choosing to honor just some parts of what God said while dismissing the rest. Neither approach shows reverence for God and His Word, so how can we expect to receive His gracious forgiveness if we don't do the simple things He commanded in order to receive that mercy? The Bible makes it clear. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What is it to repent? It isn't a word that we use often in today's language, but the meaning is to make a change in heart and life, to turn from wrong to right, and from living for ourselves to living for God. The Bible illustrates this further. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, being alienated from the life of God, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. <laughs> Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. The idea is simple. 
We have to change our lives and give them over truly to God. Jesus made it very plain in his own words. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And what about the second half of God's instructions to those who ask how they could be saved? And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. <clears throat> it's difficult to imagine how that answer could be much more straightforward. So it's baffling that much of the religious world of our day has chosen to ignore this commandment completely or to teach it as something optional that a person might want to do later. But the people who heard this command on that historic day had no problem understanding it and obeying it right away. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. The plan for salvation revealed by the apostles that day was exactly that given by Jesus himself. Some of his last recorded words before his return to heaven were these. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Is there something magic about the act of being immersed in water? Of course not. It's simply doing what God commanded and therefore a necessary act of obedient faith if we wish to enjoy the grace that he offers to those who will obey him. Throughout the many examples we read in the New Testament, the pattern is always the same. Each person who came to believe in Christ and recognized that only his blood could take away their sins received his commandments eagerly and insisted on being baptized immediately, even when that happened to be in the middle of the night. The Bible emphasizes the importance of obeying God's command to take part in this symbolic act. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Therefore, the Bible identifies baptism as the point in time at which we are united with Christ and our sins are forgiven. The first letter of Peter makes a comparison of baptism with the great flood in which God saved the eight good people who followed his instructions. He writes, eight persons were brought safely through the water. And corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So God tells us plainly that baptism will save us, not because of anything about the water or the act itself, but because when we fulfill this very direct commandment, we are demonstrating that our faith in God is real enough that we do what he tells us. It is the awesome power of God and His unending mercy and grace that bring about our salvation when we are willing to bow before Him and honor Him with real faith and obedience. One author has made a very fitting comparison between this act of baptism and a wedding ceremony. It certainly isn't the wedding that makes a man and woman want to commit their lives to each other, and it isn't the wedding that makes them faithfully keep those vows for a lifetime. But that wedding ceremony is a very necessary detail in the eyes of both society and the law if they wish to become husband and wife. And until the ceremony takes place, no matter how deeply in love, they're not yet married. The analogy is a good one. Baptism doesn't make a person have belief and faith in Christ. They already have that. It doesn't make a person live faithfully for the rest of their days. But it is the believer's wedding ceremony, a time of uniting with Christ for everyone to see. Since this act of baptism is commanded so plainly, wouldn't the person who seeks God's favor and salvation want to do everything just the way God said? So, that's the plan. God has made it incredibly simple, because it's not about what we do, but what He has done. The Bible says many things about how we are saved, by hearing, by faith, by baptism, by confession, by believing, by repentance, all necessary, but in every case, the saving power is nothing but the grace of God. His word leaves no doubt. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. And again, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, 
but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Truly, we can join in saying, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. That gift, that salvation by grace, is offered to anyone who will claim it in faith. No one is disqualified. As the Bible says, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. There is no other way, and there is no hope if we fail to claim the full pardon already paid for by the blood of Christ. For if our sins have not been taken away by his grace, God will ultimately judge each of us fairly, and that can only result in a guilty verdict. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Our only possible hope is to appear there with a slate, which he himself has compassionately wiped clean. Jesus made clear that there will be no excuses then, and being religious will be of no help. In his own words, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Why would anyone turn away from such grace? But perhaps the most touching plea of all is in the simple words of Jesus. If you love me, keep my commandments. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. These are the words of Jesus himself, the words of the Savior who gave up everything to purchase our heart. The words of the Savior who could have called 10,000 angels to destroy his tormentors, but instead chose to accept a death sentence on our behalf. And his words ring through the ages. If you love me, he said, you will keep my commandments. So what will you do? His plan of salvation is simple. The gift that he offers is beyond description. Why would you wait? to do as he teaches. Can we help you? Could we study God's word with you at a time and place of your choosing? Could we look forward to you honoring us with a visit to our church family? We want to share with you what others have shared with us. And I hope you won't turn away. But a final word of warning. This message could get under your skin, and it should. So you might want to review the video again and compare what is said to what the Bible teaches. And please, let us know what we can do for you. And uh, I understood. And uh, I'm just glad I, I obeyed the gospel. And I'm glad, because uh, I know one day when I stand before the judgment seat of God, I'm going to be judged. You know, And the Bible says, there's going to be two books, you know, and I believe that one of those books is going to probably be, be the Word of God. So my actions or my behavior or my obedience or whatever needs to be in, in line with God's uh, Word. It is very important. You know, there, there are some benefits in, in, in serving uh, God. If you've got Psalms, uh, uh, the book of Psalms, I'll just talk about three scriptures and then we'll, we'll close out about benefits, you know. I mean, there, there are some jobs that, that we get, uh, there are some jobs that, that we get, and, and some jobs we get, sometimes we choose to that particular company because of the benefits. It's not always just to pay, it, it could be the financial benefits, it could be the health insurance, it could be the retirements, 401k or whatever. But there's a lot of benefits in, in, in serving God, and then sometimes we, we forget uh, the many benefits. Does someone have Psalms uh, 68, verse 19? Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears our burdens, the God who is our salvation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, 
I, in some versions, I got the New King James uh, uh, version. It says, "Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation." Anybody else got the King James uh, version? It says that. Okay. Okay. Yep. It, it was, uh, it's about benefits. 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 Yes. No, I'm on three parts. Okay, Psalms 103, that's verse 2 through 6. It's on the turn. Psalms 103, verse 2 through 6. And it outlined some of the benefits. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I don't like to work with the federal government. I would get my benefit package and I would review it and I would tell my wife, I said, listen, now, that, that you know, you get this and you get that. And uh, I don't have that conversation with you. I ain't doing it. I had done something. But when things are well, I would get a point out. So some of some, some the benefits. <laughs> but what are some of the benefits that, that God's afford us? In Psalms uh, 103, if you got your, your Bible, would you turn to Psalms uh, 103, verse 2 through 6? You want to wait until some of the others find it. Okay. We can start in start that verse. Verse 2, I guess. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives us all our iniquities? That, that's, that's one of them. Yeah. But forgiveness. How, how important is, is that? You know. Real important. It's, it's, it's really real important. important. It's really it's important. important. You know? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because we all sin. We all mess up, you know. And, and it's nothing worse than walking around with a lot of guilt and a lot of condemnation. That, that's not happy. And that's not healthy for you, you know. But whatever you've done in the past, it really doesn't matter, you know. He'll, he'll forgive all that. If he can forgive a man like David and call David a man after his own heart, and David did things that, that none of us will, will, will probably never do in our lifetime, you know. Not only did he commit adultery with the lady, but he also, you know, he tried to cover it up. He had a husband murdered, you know. And, 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 and but God still forgave him, you know. And if you read some of the songs where David just kind of pours out his heart to God, you know, ask God to please, you know, restore the joy of, of my salvation, you know. And most people, like they've done that, they, they would just go through life feeling, you know, that, that, that you know, I, I done messed up so, so bad. Nobody will never forgive that. But, but the God that we serve, he, he, he forgive even things of that nature. Now, that, that's, that's some powerful forgiveness. And I remember kind of talking about that with me, David. Mm -hmm. you know, just, let's say Saul, because David knew how to repent. Mm -hmm. David knew how to pour out his soul to God Amen. and, and mm -hmm. ask for forgiveness and humble himself. Right. That's where mm -hmm. he find himself in trouble. Absolutely. That we, don't, we don't humble ourselves. <coughs> David would humble mm -hmm. himself before God and expose himself mm -hmm. for the man that he, that he was. And so, God always pleased Yeah. Thank you, ladies, and take my Bible spiritually. Wait for me. Yeah, let's all make excuses. Let's all make excuses. Absolutely. So, so it really doesn't matter. You can't do nothing so bad or so disgusting that the God that we serve won't forgive you. You know, if you just ask Him to to forgive you, you know, and, and you got to also forgive yourself sometimes. You know, we we can carry things like that to make us miserable. You know, but uh, but 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 God will forgive you. You know, God forgive you. Yes, brother Smoke. Uh, it's a very mm -hmm. easy word to, uh, to say forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But the first aspect of forgiveness is that if you cannot forgive, mm -hmm. you cannot be forgiven. You know? Amen. Amen. You, you have to think about it. If someone has done you something that regardless of mm -hmm. one of the most destructive mm -hmm. evil, right. and you say this man, I can't forgive that person. Mm -hmm. But you ever start to think, that you have done something wrong and you want to be forgiven. Amen. Amen. We have to look at God was like, man, no. Mm -hmm. What would have happened to us? We yeah. have done so much wrong, so much evil, mm -hmm. so unkind. And a lot of us must realize that we are unkind to a brother or a sister. Right. We are hurting ourselves. Amen. 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 Maybe holding up guilt. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. If, you, if, mm -hmm. you do, if you have that in your heart mm -hmm. and you smile at and if you think you are you are forgiven, God owes you a counter. Mm -hmm. And your sins are not forgiven. Amen. If you can if you can give forgive, mm -hmm. then God will forgive you. Amen. Amen. It's, it's contingent upon our being forgiven. Yeah. 
That, that, that's beautiful. That, that, that's beautiful. And we all need it from time to time. Oh, how, how we all need it. And what about the word of iniquity? That, that means that you've done things that you need to be punished for. You know, that brings about punishment and, and you know, he'll forgive us for, for, for those things that, that you know. And then and the next thing, what's the next thing? He gave you hope to ask you. He sure did. He, he really sure did. Gave us hope to give hope to them mm -hmm. and ask them. Amen. We should really be the sound of the one thing. Mm -hmm. We really went like down into it. And, right. and the contract of mm -hmm. the Jews. Amen. You don't want to be on. You don't want to live on the wrong side of God. You 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 don't you don't want to live 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 like it ain't no peace. It ain't no joy in 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 in, in, in being being that way. He was coming off Nicky Myers, but but because Nicky Myers was really the one to mm -hmm. just so torn apart with the children of Israel, disobeyed God, and every time God forgave them, they mm -hmm. did something wrong. Mm -hmm. They keep doing wrong things, and Nicky Myers realized that. How much they have hurt and destroyed and turned back their backs on God and God mm -hmm. forgave them. Mm -hmm. So in my thinking, Nehemiah and David, they kind of on the same page. Mm -hmm. now, now the next verse, if someone read the next verse, what, what else that does he do? He he yeah. part part of that. He heals all all our diseases. You know, and, and I know he can heal, you know, whether he chooses to do it or not. I, I know I know he's able. I, I know he's able. He, he's able. Mm -hmm. He told the children of Israel when he gave the commandments. He said, if you do these things, none of these things will happen to you. Mm -hmm. But if you disobey my commandments, all these curses that are on each are going to come on. All the diseases that you have, as long as they were obedient to God, these curses didn't come on. But when they're disobedient to God, the curses of the sickness come on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we will have sicknesses and stuff in this world. We live in a fallen world. And, and, and there's a lot of things that, that bring about, but he's got the power to, to do it. You know, I said we go to the doctors, the doctors can operate on us, they can give us medication, they, they can treat our illness, but it's God that, that heals. It's, it's him, him that heals, you know. He, he's able. And, and it's all, always like, like, I always like to thank the way that the, the, the three Hebrew boys, when they were put in the fire front, they said, God might not do it. But I know he can do it, but he, he's able, you know? And, and that's the kind of faith that, that, that you've got to, got to have. And whatever you got to go through, you got to believe that, you know, that, that God's grace is sufficient. Remember when Peter asked, the Lord, take this, this thing from me, whatever it was? You know, what Paul, whatever it was, you know? And, and he came back and said, you know, said, said his grace is, is, is sufficient. So whatever you're going through, as long as it, it, you're going through it with God, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And then uh, verse 4 says, there's something else he do, did. Verse 4, another benefit. Redeemed our life from destruction. Okay, all right. Redeemed. Uh -huh. And that's an old word, and, and most of us have been around for a while. We remember when our moms used to have those green stamps and used to save them stamp, and you would go down and redeem it for, for, for something, you know. He, he redeemed you. What, what he did on Calvary, it, it was for us. It was redemption. It, 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 was, it was redemption. It's complete. Absolutely. It's finished. Amen. Amen. When you're out without Christ and you're really in deep sin, mm -hmm. some people worse than others. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, you get you redeemed out of that. Mm -hmm. You get your life in destruction. Because that's where you get head in destruction. Other than an unfaithful life against God, disobedient. Mm -hmm. And he, down and redeems you from, from, from the end and redeems your life from destruction because if not, you can just go into the this world, go right into hell where you're going. Amen. 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 And it's kind of like a pawn ticket when you go to the pawn shop and, and get something out. I remember those days when I was in college, I tell you all this story. I used to, all of my wife, bought my wife a real neat singer sewing machine, you know, and she could sew. And every time things got real, real tight, and, and, and you know, money was short, and I needed to get a couple of dollars, you know, until I get my paychecks. I take that nice sewing machine, time to that, that Jewish woman, Jewish gentleman at a pawn shop, and I'd always get seventy five dollars. You know, he never quivered. He just took the machine, and then when I got paid off, I would go back and, and get the machine. He, he knew me, you know. But but, I, but, I, but what I had to do, I would always go back, and I would pay the price, and I would redeem. That, that sewing machine. 
And that's what Christ did for you. You know, he paid the price. He took your place. Uh, it should have been us on, on Calvary. It should have been us, you know, taking what, what he got. But, but he redeemed us. He, he, he redeemed us, you know. He redeemed us. That, that's redemption. And then what, what, what's, what's the next thing? Uh, what's, what's the next uh, benefit? You, uh, uh, after that, he said he, he redeemed your life from destruction. He crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Okay. Instead of giving us life destruction of what we deserve, mm -hmm. he crowns us with loving kindness and mercy. Okay. Loving kindness and tender mercy. And tender mercy. You know, that loving kindness is something, you know. You don't you like kind people? Loving kind people. You don't like rude people that are mean and not nice. You like, you like kind people, you know. You like kind people. You like people with a kind and a, and a, and a gentle and, 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 and a gentle spirit. He has tender mercy. I tell people my ribs are just as tender as a mother's love. <laughs> but it's not nearly as tender as God's mercy and God's love is this way, you know. God, God is a, a good God. He's concerned yeah. about when you hurt. He's con concerned about that, you know. Uh, the last preacher, the, 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 uh, our guest preacher, uh, two weeks ago, he talked about uh, he used songs about you know how, how the shepherd, how he'll take his sheep up and, and hold them, and how you know when when he, the sheep goes to drink water because the sheep are afraid of running water, what he'll do, he'll get in there and he'll dam the water up, you know, stop the water from rushing so that the sheep can just go and gently drink, you know. He talks about, you know, he, he's a loving, kind God, you know. And then in the scripture, he talks about how God wanted to, to take care of Israel, how he wanted to do like a mother hen would get her chicks under his wings, you know. When, when you describe God, you just can't use masculine terms to describe him. You got to use some, some, some feminist uh, adjectives, adverbs to describe him. This God is, God is so great, you know. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great God, you know. Merciful. Merciful yes. God, you know. Yes. You're the sheep of his pastor. Amen. 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 The good shepherd. <laughs> the, the good shepherd. And, and then what's, what he says in, 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 in uh, verse 5? He satisfies your mouth with good things so your youth is renewed like eagles. Oh, okay. Say more, it's kind of it's kind of speaks for itself, you know. He gives us all kind of kind of kind of kind of good things, you know. God, God is a good God. There's a lot of benefits in, in, in serving God. You know, there's a lot of benefits, and the old folks used to say, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. And the older I get, the more I realize just how, how sweet uh, uh, Jesus is, you know. Sweet. 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 This is sweet as what? Amen. Trust him, just so sweet, just to trust in Jesus. Yes. In you know, Isaiah 40, verse 31, it says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, mm -hmm. and they shall mount on the wings like eagles, and they shall, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not pain. Amen. He Amen. says he's going to renew our. He, he can renew us. He can renew us. He can return to the joy of your salvation. When you're in Christ, you, you can live a life of a great expectation. You know? You ain't got to, to, to get down or be depressed. And, you know, because, you know, you, you, with God, all things are possible. You know? And, and then, and then, then was Paul said, I, I want to know him, to really know him. I, I want to know him. He said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. You know, it, you know he'll hear resurrection. You know, we, we've all been down from time to time in our life. We've had circumstances, situations happen in our life, and some people just count us out, you know? But God got a way of raising us back up. You know, sometimes you might go through something, you say, I'll never smile at you. I'll never love anybody again. I, I don't have any hope for ever finding anybody. But, but, but he'll, he'll do some of that. He'll, he'll do some of that. That's what he says. He says he yeah. takes the bad out of our mouth and puts good things in our mouth. Amen. Because, you know, mm -hmm. people of despair and discouragement yeah. and mm -hmm. all kinds of negative things. And then he puts good things in our mouth Amen. that, that encourage mm -hmm. us and strengthen us, that renew us, that gives us, gives us hope. Amen. Keep going on. Amen. Keep going on in life. Who was the preacher, that, the, the, the prophet that says uh, about can these bones live again? Ezekiel said, can these bones live again? 
And God gave him that, that vision uh, where he went into this battle. And he saw all these dry bones. He said these bones were, were you know, sometimes when you see bones and stuff about, uh, sometimes when you eat a good piece of chicken or rib and you don't leave no meat on it, you know, you, you're not even, even if you're giving it to the dog, there ain't nothing left. But anyway, when he went into the battle and he saw these bones, he said these bones are dry bones. The bones were, were polished, they were shining, it wasn't no meat, it wasn't no marrow, it wasn't nothing left on it. And, and, and he said, man, this, this, looks, this looks like a hopeless situation. And God asked him, can these bones live again? And he said, God, you know, you know, people might count you out, but with God, you, you, you can rise again. You, you, can, you can be resurrected, you know? You can be down one time. Maybe you lost a house. Maybe you lost, maybe somebody walked out on you. Maybe you lost a, a good job. And during this particular economy, the last couple of years, a lot of people suffered loss. A lot of people suffered loss, you know? And, and some people, when they suffered loss, they wanted to, to give up on life. Some people went so far as to, to take their life, you know? And, and became bitter, you know? But, but you don't have to be that way. He'll, he'll give you a, a, another chance. He'll, he'll raise you uh, again. And I know he'll, he'll raise you back up. Amen. You know, that's the God we serve. There's so many benefits that serve that I, I re do you recommend Jesus. Amen. Yes. I, I recommend him. Everybody needs need, need Jesus, you know? Yes. There's a song that says, Only believe all things are possible. Only Amen. 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 Sister Cora. You know, I've been a member of the church. Um, mm -hmm. All of my adult life, mm -hmm. and um, got baptized at the age of eight, and was always considered myself a good person. Never really mm -hmm. got wild mm -hmm. off in college and and that type of thing, you know. Um, and, and and I felt that I was a, a really good person. I really felt that I understood mm -hmm. um, the the Lord and the Lord's benefits. I, I never did anybody wrong. Never. Mm -hmm. um, never um, wanted to step out of what I felt was the normal lifestyle um, for a Christian. But you know, up until I really got into uh, understanding the Word of God, I mean, a lot of folks come to church and probably have been in church like I have for a long time, but you just kind of get a surface overview of what God is all about, you know. Um, but you don't really get to know Him until you get to really know him. And you really know him through the word of God. I, I know a friend of mine became a Christian, um, came to the church, and um, she said, I really want to be a Christian because I see your life, and, I, and everything that you touch is good. You know, God blesses you all the time. So I want to be able to get what you get. Now, she was not even convinced that God could really do that. She mm -hmm. saw what she thought was a, a good life, but it, you know, it had its challenges just like anybody else. And I think when you really know know God and understand God, and you, the only way to get to know Him and understand Him and know that if He want to do it, He could do it. Mm -hmm. You you get to know that through the Word, mm -hmm. through through understanding what the Word says about His power, because. He is really powerful, but if you just got that surface view or a high-level understanding of what he's all about, that's not really getting to know him. Mm -hmm. Getting to know him is getting deep and ingrained and, and um, really concentrating on um, his word and, and, and what he's all about. And that's a personal, you get that personal relationship um, with him. Young lady sent me an email. Oh no, I got this from somebody at the hospital. And um, it was a little email uh, thing that was floating around. And it was a story about a person that, that wanted to have a conversation with God. And this person said, God, why did, are you making me have such a bad day? And it was like they were going back and forth with God. And um, so the, uh, in, in the email, the, the, person, the, the, the next thing that happened, um, God said, and you know, this is just an email. God said, what do you mean I'm, I'm making you have a bad day? So the person started naming things off one by one. Um, I got up late for work. You know, my car wouldn't start when I wanted to start my car. Um, I, um, I went to get my lunch and they made my sandwich wrong and they had to rebake it so 
I had to wait. And then, and then I got home. All I wanted to do is relax and put my feet in this um, foot massager, and it wouldn't work. And um, God said, mm. so um, let me tell you what, let me give you my thoughts on this. The reason you woke up late is because the death angel was at your bed, and I had an angel to come and fight the death angel off so that I could have spared your life. The reason you didn't, um, you, um, your car wouldn't start is because there was an act, a drunk driver who, had you gotten on the road, it would he would have hit you and you would have died. Mm -hmm. um, the reason your sandwich would have had to be made over is because um, the person that was fixing it was sick, and I didn't want you to catch what they had, and you would have been out of work. I mean, you know, God, God does, does so much for us, and that's we know that's the story. There was no conversation back and forth with God, but yet, you know, yeah, sometimes, yeah, you know, sometimes we don't acknowledge this stuff. Well, one thing that comes to mind, you just brought uh, to mind Daniel. Remember when Daniel prayed? Right. And he was delayed in receiving the answer, but uh, Michael had the answer, but he was fighting with Satan. And he said, you know, he had to wrestle fight with Satan for uh, like was it seven days or 21 days. It was 21 days, yeah, to was a fight. But I, we, I heard you as soon as you said it. You know, but there was, the, the adversary was there, that's not delayed. So there are things that happen that we don't necessarily understand why. And that's the same attitude you know, I try to have when I'm driving, someone cuts me off, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're blocking me from yeah. something else. You know, you just have to kind of change the way we think it. You know, we know that God is ruling in our lives. Maybe, like I said, he could be preventing you from something. You don't know. You don't know. So you just have that faith that it's still God is still in control no matter what happens. And you learn to accept okay. You know, uh, some of them over there is no testimony mm -hmm. from any person that can strengthen not only their faith, but another person's faith that is there to witness that testimony that has gone through some trials and some challenges and tribulations in their life, and God was there. Mm -hmm. know, they he proved to them that his word mm -hmm. was true. Mm -hmm. You know, they experienced the benefits of getting well, overcoming certain diseases, mm -hmm. and overcoming certain financial challenges. You know, uh, always uh, remember the story of Job. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if anybody could have just given up, you know, because something negative happened, it was Job. And I pray and ask God mm -hmm. every day, whatever you see fit to send in my life, mm -hmm. give me, keep me believing in you. Mm -hmm. the way Job did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes until we go through certain things, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't have the, the faith, Amen. the strength and the faith Amen. that we should have. Amen. So I pray every day, God, just continue mm -hmm. to hold my hand and mm -hmm. keep my faith strong in you. Mm -hmm. you know, so that I can be, you know, it's nice to have other people to pray for you, but I want to be able to pray for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to believe that you can do these things. Thank you.